You know when people keep saying something is the best, I normally would end up being disappointed. Just because you keep hearing these hypes and it's difficult to manage your expectation. So, will I be disappointed with, <clears throat> let me see, the best film, the film of our generation, the king of portrait film photography, the out of stock at every single store, the legendary holy 35 millimeter film stock, the Portra 400. This is technically not my first roll of Portra 400. I shot a roll a while back when trying street photography with the Actor 100. But today, I will bring you with me to a natural light, casual lifestyle portrait shoot at the Malibu Pier and we'll see how this film turned out. This is Ivy. She's a dear friend of mine and also our model today. We met up around 4 o'clock at Malibu Pier Cafe and grabbed some food first. This is one of my favorite type of shoot. No specific theme, no crazy fancy wardrobe, just me and the model. We're going out, hanging out, um, kind of like going on a date type of uh, photo shoot. First shot, we're inside of the cafe. We're indoor under indirect sunlight. Right off the bat, I think the color came out the default skin. It's already pretty good. The first shot came out a little bit desaturated. But the second shot came out almost exactly like how I would picture skin tone under indirect sunlight. After lunch, when we start shooting outdoor, it's about 4.40ish, so it's about three hours before sunset. We got this lovely California afternoon sunlight to play with. When shooting outdoor in natural light with digital camera, I always prefer to shoot in direct sunlight. I normally would shoot in the shade or like backlight. I would expose for the skin tone. If the sky or the background gets overexposed, it doesn't really bother me much. My top priority is always to get soft and even lighting for the portrait. I hardly ever shoot direct sunlight. I feel like it's a little too contrasty and too vibrant for me. But the past few months I have been shooting film, I started to appreciate the color under the sunlight. So today, for science, I thought, let's step into the sunlight for this. The shadow on our face fall off softly. It's not too harsh, which is nice. The behind the scene footage was shot on my iPhone 7, no color adjustment or anything. Compared to the iPhone footage, the film looks a bit warmer and more flat. All of these photos are shot on the Canon 1V with a 50mm prime lens. I think I was mostly shooting at f2.8. This is another thing I will pay more attention to down the road. Since I'm shooting on film, you won't get all of the camera setting documented on the picture like how digital would. And I think after you get the film processed and scanned, looking at the results and knowing your setting would help you understand how your aperture and the shutter speed will affect the shot. And when the photo came out not the way you wanted, you can also reflect on your camera setting to see how you can do it differently. Does that make sense? Obviously, you don't have to remember every single shot, what aperture and what shutter speed you shot on. Uh, I just think knowing that it's good for uh, study purpose. Now as I'm editing this video, looking at the iPhone footage, I can see how much yellow I added in the photo. For some reason, I always thought if I'm shooting Kodak film, the film color should be yellow. <laughs> Actually, the default skin can have more magenta in it. Me personally, I'm not a big fan of magenta tone. But in this case, I think the default skin might look more true to the real skin tone or more true to the iPhone skin tone. <laughs> I do like the yellow. It has this California sunny summer vibe. But do you think it's too yellow? That brings another discussion about should or should you not edit your film photos. We'll talk about this some other time. When shooting portrait on film or digital, I always tend to overexpose it a little bit. I didn't use a separate light meter for this shoot. I was just gauging off the light meter that is built in the camera. 
And now looking at the results, I think I overexposed it too much. When shooting under direct sunlight, I might want to just shoot at the correct exposure to preserve more color and detail in the skin tone. As we all know, film normally does a better job overexposed than underexposed. And the Portrait 400 has great latitude preserve the highlights, which is awesome. I'm able to bring a lot of detail back. This one you can see when she's standing in the shade, the camera is considering the sky. So the model looks a bit underexposed. When I bring up the overall exposure in editing, there are still enough detail in the highlight part. I really like this couple of shots. It was 5 p.m. at this point. If you want to shoot outdoor in the open, two hours before sunset is more ideal lighting situation. Hey, did you down? This clip was shot on my Sony a7 III. This is pretty much how it would look like if I'm shooting with a digital camera. I do like how blue all of the blue is. The sky, the ocean, her dress, her sweater with the white railing. It looks really nice. I don't think film and digital one is always better than the other. I do like both of them. Which one do you like better? I know all the film people are gonna say, Of course film, what are you talking about? Portrait 400 forever! <laughs> With this shot, at first we're waiting for the lady and the gentleman in the background to leave. And then I thought it would be an interesting shot having them in it. And this actually turns out to be one of my favorite shots of the day. Later we tried with backlight, again color and the skin tone came out really nicely. We were surrounded by a lot of white wall and the fences, it added a lot of fill light to her face. I really like how the sunlight hitting on her hair kind of separated her from the background. This is probably the most vibrant combi I've ever seen. A neon green color. Like that's a very interesting choice to paint your car. <laughs> the last couple of shots, I definitely overexposed it. As the sun is going down, the color is getting warmer. I experimented a little bit how much I can bring back through editing and messed around with color a little bit and I also made one black and white just for fun. But who would do that to a Portra 400? Who would make Portra 400 black and white? That's just absurd. <laughs> we were planning on going to the beach to shoot one more row but it was a Sunday afternoon, the beach was really crowded. So we end up just went to a dessert shop and grab some dessert and call it a day. Overall, I can totally see how this film is many people's favorite. The 400 speed make it very versatile for either indoor or outdoor shooting. You don't have to change film, the color looks great, the skin tone is beautiful. It's not too contrasty or too vibrant like the actor 100. But the latitude is also great, it leaves a lot of room for editing. That's if you ever edit your film. <laughs> 
This roll of film was processed by a local film lab called 35M Pro. I scanned it at home with a flatbed scanner. This is only my second roll of Portrait 400 I ever shot. I think my scan probably didn't even do justice to this film. I am curious about how a professional film lab would scan this film. Maybe down the road I will do a test and to see how I can improve my own home scan versus a professional lab. And all right, this is it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you find this video any helpful, please give this a like button. Give this a like button. <laughs> please click the like button and consider to subscribe to my channel. And this is Sam. I will see you next week. Bye.